Hello everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 14, we're going to answer the question, what in the heck is a getter? We'll have a quick look at what getters are, as well as talk about how important getters are in helping identify vintage tubes. And at the end, we'll look at some of the great tubes that came in the post this week. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, when I first got interested in vacuum tubes, I wondered, what in the heck is that silver ring at the top of the tube? It must be doing something, or it wouldn't be there. Well, in the case of most tubes, it actually isn't doing anything at all. Not anymore, anyway. To understand getters, we need to go back to the beginning when a tube is nearing completion. A near-perfect vacuum needs to be established. To do this, the tube is connected to a vacuum pump at one end or the other through a small glass tube. The little tips or pips we see on the finished tube is that opening closed off with molten glass. Okay, let's take a look at a couple. Here's a 5881 or a 6L6 by Tungsol. The key was broken and you can see the little glass pip here quite clearly. And that's where the vacuum would have been applied and the two would have been closed off for the last time. And you can see I've made a little mark here so that you can orient that properly when installing it. What else have we got? Here we go. Here's a small signal tube. This is a 12AU7. Nope, 12AT7. And you can see the little pip at the end here. That would have been connected up to the little glass tube, to the vacuum pump, and when the uh, when the vacuum had been created, they would have closed off the tube with molten glass. Okay, so if the tube has a vacuum and it is a closed system, why do we still need a getter? Well, after sealing the tube, the tube still has some stray gas molecules clinging to various parts, and these last strays need to be removed. Also, even though the glass is mostly impervious to oxygen, the occasional molecule will sneak in where the pins or wires exit the glass. And this is the purpose of the getter, to maintain a perfect vacuum. In most cases, the getter is just a receptacle or holder for barium, which is the silvery coating we, we see on the top of vacuum tubes. And of course, if a tube loses its vacuum, it goes white. Let me see if I can grab one out of the garbage here. Ah, uh, here's one. I just got a large, two large shipments of Russian tubes in, and they, they often, we often lose a few. Uh, one batch of 500 tubes, I lost seven, so that's not too bad. But you can see what happened here. The tip, which is pretty fragile on these tubes. Some of them, you know, have that thin little piece. Some of them are a little more solid. Here's a little more solid one here. But the thin ones on many of the Russian tubes, uh, they're really vulnerable to snapping off. And if it snaps off wrong, of course, it opens up a hole. The vacuum is no longer valid and the tube will go white like that. So. Even if you don't see a clear break on a tube, if a tube's gone white, it's it's dead. Even if it tests sort of okay, it's dead. Forget about it. In the garbage it goes. Okay. So, after the tube is sealed, it's heated, and the volatile metal flashes off, coating the adjacent surface and immediately absorbing stray gas molecules. So long as the coating remains, it is still able to absorb more gas. On older tubes, it's even possible to see the coating wearing away. Okay, 
Let's take a look at a bunch of tubes, locate the getter, figure out what type it is, and describe it for identification purposes. Okay, so let's start with this big guy here. This is our Marconi 6L6. They're beautiful tubes. It's got a light coating, which is meant to help isolate it electrically to any adjacent um, noise, electrical noise. And it's got a really neat pair of double, large double D getters. Let's see if you can see them in there. They're at the bottom, so it's a bottom getter. You see that, that big metal D shape? And there's one on the other side as well. That's pretty unusual to have double getters, but it happens. And of course, the silvering is all the way along the bottom. And you can see this is a very old tube. It probably dates back to the 1940s. And you can see here that some of the gettering, you can even see a little bit of white, that is a long-term wear as the tube slowly ages. The gettering will, will get older and fade away and eventually it will be won't be effective anymore. Okay, what else have we got to show you? Here's um, an RFT EO34, a beautiful tube. The Rams got their awful logo all over the thing. Um, I'm not sure why they did that. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that this is one of the best DL34s out there. So if we want to know where the getter is, we look for the silvering in most cases. And of course, this is a this is a top getter. You can see the whole top has got a beautiful silver dome. And there is a large circular getter, and we would call that, I would call that, an elevated halo getter, or a large elevated halo getter. Okay, what have we got up next? Uh, this is a sil rebranded Sylvania 6SN7GT, one of my favorite Sylvanias. And it's also a bottom getter. You can see the silvering around here. And it has got what's called a foil getter, which sort of looks like a, a rectangle. Sometimes they have a fold on them. In this case, uh, maybe it has a little fold. Let's see if you can see it. you got to look down and in. And you can just you see it there. So that's the foil getter. These tubes uh, are nicknamed bad boys for their brilliant sound quality. Just like you would name... Uh, a fellow who's a giant tiny, um, I think, and um, one of the well, one of the really interesting things is they they've become very popular. I've been talking them up recently, and uh, other people have as well. And the really fun thing is there are people on eBay selling tubes, six S and sevens, that are GTBs, GTAs. Uh, that aren't even Sylvanias and calling them bad boys. So here are the, de here are the defining features. Elevated black T-plates with either two or three rivets. A waist chrome that's fairly large. The foil getter is a real indicator. These tubes uh, were all made by Sylvania and most of them, this one doesn't, but most of them will have a date code in the 1950s. Okay. What's next? Here we got an RCA 6SN7, and it's got a bottom large D getter. You see it there? There it is. They're hard to see the lower ones, and it's got just a little bit of silvering. Now, if it's got a little bit of silvering, that doesn't necessarily mean that the tube is running out of out of gas or the wrong way to say it. It's starting to fill up with gas um, because of course the purpose of the, the the gettering is to absorb any stray gas in there. Uh, it may not, a lot of tubes just didn't seem to have a lot to start with, um, particularly the bottom getter tubes and we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. All right, here's a 6SN7 GTA by General Electric. Fairly common tube and an interesting tube because they have a side getter. Chrome is on the side. You can't see the getter on the front, but if we look right through the plates, you can see 
that. There it is. Can you see that? There it is. There it is. That's a horseshoe getter. Now, the reason why we name these getters very particularly is because when you're trying to identify a vintage tube, one of the great things that we've got going for us after the plate, and of course after the label, in many cases we don't have any label left, or a very faint label, um, the plates are very distinctive, but the getters are also very distinctive. So if we have a plate confirmation and a getter confirmation with a known good tube, that's a really good indicator that we're almost there. You line up the wire connections. I've shown this in previous tube labs. Line up your tubes side by side, and if the wire connections are the same, then you've bingo, you've got the same tube. Okay, so this is the GE6SN7GTB, so the next generation after the last one we just looked at. Same thing, side getter. But in this variation, we've got a side halo getter. You see the circle? There we go. What's next? Okay, here's an interesting tube. This is a Tungsol 12SN7GT. So an early um, an early version of the tube, and it's also got a bottom getter, and it is it's fairly easy to see because it doesn't have any chrome. Now, does that mean the tube has expired? No, all of these um, these Jan Joint Army Navy mil spec tubes from Tungsol are like that. But what it does have is a bar along the long axis of the D. And I believe on this style of getter that that bar actually contains the material that maintains the vacuum. And you'll see that occasionally on tubes, uh, more so with vintage tubes than with newer tubes. Newer tubes seem to all use uh, barium or a um, or a material close to barium, and you'll see the typical silvering. And of course, proof positive is, um, this is a tube from the 1950s. Um, 60, 70 years later, this tube is testing like new old stock, which is what, what it is. Okay, here's an example. This is this Sylvania 6SN7GT, so a fairly old tube with the, with the black T plates. Now, it's got an upper getter, or top getter, because it's got a chrome dome. And here you can see what happens as the gettering ages. You see that white line? Now, that may be a sign that the vacuum is gone, because there's so much of that white line. And in fact, uh, this tube is testing gassy. It came out of the delete bin. But if you see a faint edge of white, that doesn't necessarily mean that the tube is gone. That what you're seeing there is the is the silver coating, the gettering, slowly retreating as it gets worn away by the action of keeping the, the vacuum intact. Okay. What else have we got? Let's look at some smaller tubes. So this is a Phillips Mini Watt SQ, special quality. These are beautiful tubes. We're gonna look at these in a future tube lab. It's an E80cc, and it, it is a somewhat uh, sub for the 12AU7. And it's in a big, tall glass envelope. And it's got what I would call an elevated halo getter. You see the size of that sucker up there? It's on a long stock. It's got a large chrome dome, so very distinctive. And again, that would help identify that too. And of course, it's got... This is a Phillips tube, so on the shoulder it's got its manufacturing code. Okay, so here's a 12AT7, we just looked at it earlier, and it's got a really interesting getter. It's got a, a D-shaped getter at the top. A lot of the top getters are circular or halo getters, but this is a vintage um, 12AT7. And it's got an interesting getter. Okay, so 
That probably wasn't a lot of fun, but maybe it'll be a wee bit useful. As you can see, knowing your getters will help you identify tubes, especially difficult tubes. And since this was a short lab, let's have some fun and have a quick look at some of the tubes that came in the post this week. Okay, let's just clear the decks here quickly. Some of these tubes came out of the throwaway box, and some of them are good, so we're not going to toss them around. Okay. Uh, this was a week of getting Russian tubes in. This is a Russian um, 6v6, easily recognized. I'm not sure why it seems like all 6v6s had the coating on the glass. Maybe it was because the, the plate structure is so ugly inside there and they they just got into the habit. Anyways, these are quite interesting. This is a reflector from 1974. And this, with the flying C, this is a Svetlana from 1954. Isn't that interesting? So those will go into the store shortly. What else have we got? We've got a lot of Russian EL84s that came in. These are all used, so they'll go into the store at a very good price. And, of course, you can... This is an early reflector logo. Just a little tiny sort of a shield with a box through it. And interesting about EL84s, um, they can show a little bit of, of soot or burn marks on them which means that they've been running fairly hot. Now, I've, I've bought a lot of uh, EL84s, vintage EL84s, and you see that often. So it's not, and they'll test, some of them will test new old stock or very close. It's not an indicator that the tube has been abused. It appears to be that the, the type itself has run fairly hot. And that's just, there's your um, cooling slots in the actual plates so that's where you would see a little bit of that burning or soot and let's take a quick look at the getter on this one it's of course the chrome dome so it's an upper getter and up there let's see if you can see that you see that disc up there that is a very typical russian getter and that is called a flying saucer for obvious reasons and if you're trying to figure out if you've got a legitimate a real tube made in West Germany or in the UK um, and it's got one of these flying saucer getters well it may well be a fake folks okay what else came in oh some beautiful tubes came in from the Ukraine this is one of the greatest of the Russian 6SN7s They're, the Cyrillic is 6H8C and it's got an elevated black T plate with two rivets. Sound familiar? It's got a pair of ears, mica spacers, to make sure that we don't get unwanted vibration in there. And it's impossible to see, but it's got a folded foil getter at the base. And of course, you can see it's got the coating at the, I would call, in my catalog, I call that a waste coating. And um, where's that other tube that we were just looking at? Let's just compare that. In fact, in a future tube lab, we're going to shoot out these two tubes, the Sylvania and the uh, MELZ melts, which, which is an abbreviation for Moscow Electric um, Company. And um, they made some really high quality tubes and they were one of the, the really big manufacturers in the uh, for, former Soviet Union. But look at the similarities between the Sylvania bad boys and these, um, these tubes from Russia. They look almost identical. So I'm really keen to do a shootout. In many cases, early, early tubes were either built under license or manufacturers simply copied a type that was around. So this is a very early type of 6SN7. 
And this is a Russian very early type of 6SN7. So you can see the similarities. What else do we have? Let's not drop that. Oh, these came in from a wholesaler that I buy quite a few tubes from. This is a Sylvania 12AU7A, and they're all from 1968. And it's an interesting tube. Sylvania, of course, was one of the, the really big players in the United States. And it's got part of what I would call the typical corrugated Sylvania plate that you'll see on the 12AU7, the 12AX7, but it's actually got flat wings instead of another sort of a, a corrugation. And I've list, done some listening tests to these already, and they are very, very quiet. And in case you don't know, a lot of the 12A um, series tubes uh, have noise problems. The, particularly the vintage tubes. Uh, some of them have just gotten older and noisier. Some of them are probably just noisier to start with. And of course, the higher gain 12AX7 is a real problem. Finding a matched vintage, matched section. Remember, there's two tubes inside of these. This is a dual triode. Finding matched second sections of a 12AX7 that are both quiet is a real problem. And it's one of the reasons why they're so expensive on the used market. But look at that. You see, they're all tipped in green paint. And that's a, often an indicator that the tube is a select tube. So that would explain why they're all testing really high and they're all low noise. Okay. Uh, last but not least, let's do a quick unboxing. Getting into these boxes can be a real chore sometimes. Okay. Let's see if we can get in here. Seems like I spent half my lifetime either picking up tubes at the post office or dropping off tubes for shipping at the post office. Let's try here. I think that's got it, folks. Oh, it's a recycled box. If you buy from me, I try to recycle all the packaging. Not just because I'm cheap, but because I think it's the environmentally responsible thing to do, because you would not believe how much packaging comes in to the store every single week. It's just insane. Okay, I haven't been in the box. I have an idea what's in here. Whenever I do a buy, I always make up a purchase order. Otherwise, I'd never be able to keep track of what's coming in. So that's a good example of how to wrap. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? S Service EL34s. Original boxes, I believe. S is for, um, oh, it's coming to me, Siemens. So it's, these are, let's see if I can get in here without making a mess of things. These are a, probably a, a replacement Siemens product for repairmen, perhaps, or maybe purchased in bulk to do maintenance um, under contract. I'm not sure. I've never actually seen a box labeled Siemens service. Okay. You know, when you're selling a product and advertising it on eBay or in a store, it's, it's best to be honest with people. If you're not sure what Siemens service is, just tell them what what you know. You know that the S stands for Siemens. Now, that's a nice looking tube. It's got the narrow base, which is a real hint that this is in fact 
and you can see it's got a fairly large halo getter on the elevated stock up there. And it's got the two shields on the top of the heater where it pokes out. So those will be nice and bright. I think this may be one of the one of the best vintage EL34s. Let me just see. I just had one out. So I happen to know that this is an RFT. Back in the day, um, Ram Tube has bought a lot of these and rebranded them with their logo. So you can see that. So let's compare them. First thing you do is you look at the plates. And let's get it lined up. So that's the correct side. And the plates have eight rivets and two slots. You can see the support rod coming right through the plate. The back side is identical. And if we want some more confirmation, we line them up and we look at the wiring. It's hard to see on camera, but the wiring is identical. And we can even have a peek on the base. Often there's something good on the base that will give you a good indication. And there's actually a mold number here. And they're different, but they're in the same spot. So we know almost for certain now that this is an RFT, which is a fabulous EL34. And of course, um, the RFT EL34s were rebranded by probably more companies than any other well-known power tube in the world. Uh, so Siemens wasn't alone in rebranding. Um, many of the guitar amplifiers would rebrand as well. Okay. Well, that was fun. So this is Jim from Valves and More signing off. And if you stay to the end, here's some discount codes you can use as often as you like. Remember, we have free free shipping on orders over $150 and $20 flat rate global shipping. Okay, cheers everyone.